Hello boys and girls. It is time to braise some oxtail. Now oxtail is the tail of the cow. You can see the bone there and the meat surrounding it. The nice layer of fat and these little rings. And it goes all the way down. This is towards the tip. This is, you know, right towards the poop chute there. And then we have this I'm adding as well just for some extra flavor and gelatin. This is just a big beef bone big massive slab which will just make it all the more tastier and silkier that broth. So I've got some hot coconut oil you may be able to see a little bit of smoke coming off of there just hot enough to have some smoke and very important I dried all these chunks first because you want to get them brown. This is the part where you're just trying to get everything nice and brown get some color on it and uh, very important to have a nice, rich, full-bodied broth when it's all said and done, which is the main reason to cook oxtail, is for that yummy broth. And uh, you can cook, you know, this is basic braising. You could use any cut of meat. This is not just a special way to make oxtail. This is how I braise everything from rabbit legs to what you're seeing right here. So this is just basic braising 101. First step, there's that big bone. First step is to get everything nice and brown on high heat. I'll show you that in a sec. Okay, so it's going. We're not there yet, but I just wanted to show you over here. Working on my mirepoix. Got my onions. I'm going to do some carrots and some celery as well. And uh, I'll have that all ready by the time that's nice and brown. Okay, okay, now that is brown and noisy too, as you can hear. If you are, if your kitchen is really clean and you're kind of embarrassed by that, like maybe it's a sign that uh, you're not doing enough cooking, you can forever ruin your kitchen by, by doing this. You can see the grease splatters pretty much everywhere. <laughs> oh yeah, good stuff. Anyways, I'm setting this off to the side. Uh, so that I can put in the mirepoix, which is the, the good old French trinity of carrot, celery, and onions. And uh, we'll get started with that. You see a lot of people when they braise, they'll drain this fat off. But you can see it's not burnt. And this is great fat, you know, prime. Good beef tallow for cooking up the vegetables. First thing I'm going to put in are the carrots. Actually, I'm going to have to shut the camera off and two-hand this, but I'll be right back. All right, now we're in business. I added the carrots first, followed by the onions, and then the celery. That's just nitpicky stuff, though. You can just throw it all in together at once. But uh, I'll show you. That's basically what it looks like before it's cooked down much. I'll show you what it looks like before I start adding the other ingredients, once I've cooked it down nice and sweet and brown and yummy. Bye-bye. Okay, you can see that now. Definitely reduced. The onions could have been, could have gone a little bit longer, but you know, we're okay. We're ready to do the next step, which is add some tomato paste. You can see there's some grease still left in the pan, which is good. We need that to toast our tomato paste on the bottom of the pan, which is referred to as pensage. But I've got this little one here. Again, I need two hands to throw this in. Just a small little uh, six ouncer of tomato paste I'm going to throw in there. And then I'll show you a little glimpse of what it looks like getting it toasted. Okay, we're back. You can see that. Get a little close up here. You can see that tomato paste is starting to get a, just a little bit of brown on it. And you can see a little bit sticking to the bottom of the pan. That means it's time to deglaze. Deglaze just means to add liquid to stop the high heat cooking process. We're cooking in hot fat, which is much higher than the boiling temperature. And normally I would use red wine for any kind of braise. That's what I typically use. I don't have any red wine, and I thought I'll try something today for the first time. And that is some Guinness. The finest of commercial made beers, in my opinion. Um, yeah, here we go. It's going in. And it's not like there's actually alcohol in the finished product. Alcohol evaporates and uh, all that remains is the liquid behind, the flavor. Oh yeah, oh yeah, there's one. 
I'm going to add the second. Mmm. Yeah, it could be it could be a little funky. I'm I'm interested to see how it turns out. I'll give an honest assessment on the 180 kitchen blog of how this actually turned out. I'm going to turn the heat up to high and uh, I'm going to scrape the bottom and the sides of the pan. You want to scrape that flavor off. It's kind of the beauty of the, the stainless steel pans is it uh, really gets some good flavor. It's almost like little flavor crystals accumulate on the pan that you use this liquid to scrape off and again that's called deglazing. You can see we have a nice rich yummy looking broth already. We don't even have our precious little oxtails in there which I'm going to throw back in there. And uh, what I do from here at this point, I'll bring it to a boil. I'll reduce this, uh, boil at high heat until most of the liquid is evaporated and it takes on a kind of a thick consistency. And then I just cover it with water, bring it back to a boil, uh, add some herbs. It would be nice if I had some bay leaves and some other things. Uh, it looks like it's probably going to be thyme today. I'll just throw a bunch of thyme sprigs from my garden in there. And then uh, I'm going to cook it in the oven. I'll go ahead and turn the oven on now, actually. Let's see. Three. I think three. Let's do just 300 is fine. And then, uh, yeah, then you cover it. Put it in there. I'll show you that whole process in a moment. Okay, you can see now we're looking at more of a saucier consistency here, and that's about the right. Uh, that's about how you want it. Um, to clear up any controversy here, this is. I've, it's already tasting really good. There's no doubt that Guinness is going to make for an awesome thing. There's a little bundle of herbs. I guess I could have showed it to you. I just tied it up with some string. It's just uh, thyme. Like I said, some bay leaves and some. You know, other parsley, other herbs would have been nice. And now I'm going to add the water here. This is out of my special blue cup. We've been through a lot together. <laughs> my lips have touched it many times. Oh, yeah. The oven is ready. That looks about right. You don't want to totally drown it, but you want to make sure everything is covered. I think. This last bone here, I might put just a little bit more water in there. I did salt it too, I didn't show you guys that. Um, but yeah, as soon as this comes up to a boil, which will be two or three minutes, I'll put a lid on it and throw it in the oven at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, that's that. I will try to show you the finished product. It'll take three or four hours at least before that meat has fallen off the bone. But when it is, it's done and very delicious. Anyways, that's it for now. Well all right that's fresh out of the oven it's still bubbling a little bit good stuff um, we're looking at 549 so it was in there for over five hours at 300 degrees and since I don't like to just run an oven I got a whole brisket in there too well not a whole one but a big slab of brisket that uh, is getting nice and soft and tender but I got uh, I pulled one of them out here you can see that uh, the meat just falls right off the bone I'm going to pick that off tonight and serve it up with some homemade pasta and it should be really nice. Anyways, that's Guinness Braised Oxtail and you know what? It's really good. So thanks again, Matt Stone, 180 degree hell, see ya.